This is a CT case of small bowel obstruction. We have an axial series, and in this case, the patient was given intravenous contrast. We know because there's contrast within the aorta, portal vein, it's enhancing the organs such as the kidneys here. Patient history was that she had been vomiting, had not been passing stool or gas. If we're scrolling through looking at the bowel loops, we notice that there are some dilated loops of small bowel. For example, here's one filled with fluid. There's air, that's an air fluid level. Something that can be helpful is to measure the diameter of the small bowel. Here I'm getting 4.4 centimeters. Anything above 2.5 centimeters, you have to start thinking about obstruction. If that's something you suspect, the next step is to look for a transition point. Essentially, this represents where the obstruction is happening. Often this is related to surgical adhesions, hernias, or maybe an obstructing malignancy. This patient had had surgery can actually see skin staples here. The patient was recently post-op, and this can be difficult. Uh, it can be one of the most difficult parts about these cases is finding the transition point. A lot of the time, you just have to follow the small bowel and lead to a point where you see a transition in caliber. Something that could be helpful also is that the distal part of the dilated small bowel near the transition point is going to have aerated stool in it. And so that's called the small bowel feces sign. Notice that more proximally, the small bowel has fluid in it. There's no air within the fluid, just air layering on top. Whereas more distally, here we have small bowel that's intermixed with air. That's because more distally, the small bowel is absorbing that fluid. This is not a normal finding. Normally you should only see this in the large bowel. And so when you see the small bowel have air in it, that's a sign of obstruction also signifies that you're probably close to the transition point. And in this case, the transition point is actually right here. The only way to know is really to scroll back and forth. There's a case link in the uh, description. You can take a look, but there's small bowel that's dilated and then it leads right here. There's an immediate change in caliber where it becomes very narrow. And distally, if you were to follow it, the small bowel continues to be narrow. And so that confirms our transition point is right there. Occasionally you can have two transition points. That's called a closed loop obstruction. That can be a problem because the contents of the small bowel between the two transition points don't have anywhere to decompress. So those patients are at higher risk of bowel ischemia. So we found the obstruction, we found the transition point. Next, you wanna look for any signs of bowel ischemia. That would include um, pneumatosis intestinalis, so air in the wall of the small bowel, as well as portal venous gas, air within the portal veins. I'm not seeing any of those findings here. Ultimately, if the patient does have bowel ischemia, you can see perforation, which you would see free air, pneumoperitoneum. That's also not present in this case. So summary findings are that this is a small bowel obstruction. It's occurring fairly distally here in the pelvis, likely related to adhesions in the setting of the surgery. I don't see any hernia, I don't see any mass that would be causing that. There's no evidence of perforation.